the calculus of variation infinite dimension I will not be doing separate uh, tutorials because it's a type of topic I don't know whether even if I do tutorial just to take one problem he will spend all the time there so I am not going but meanwhile in the process itself I will uh, show some examples which you can do whatever it is whatever I left you can fill it up instead of taking just one equation find it so like Lagrange equation or optimal that will unnecessarily take too much so I left separately but I will taking I am not making you uh, give you free because that the organizers will not allow me so I will continue this Okay. So, uh, so I'm uh, going to uh, show uh, just uh, to start with some examples uh, which motivated this uh, infinite dimensional calculus of variation problem. Some of the classical problem. If you recall Dito's problem, which I think in a simpler form you can write it like that, right? Suppose you have a function y from a b. Yeah with the y a equal to y b equal to 0. This is a simplified form. And eventually that one, right? And you have a curve. So that it length of the curve is given to you and you want to maximize the area. You know the solution is semicircular. So what is that? You want to minimize, the, in, uh, minimize this, right? Integral of y of x dx. So I am just uh, giving a how this form, problem formulation. I am not going to solve it now. When you get optimality conditions, many of them can be solved using Euler Lagrange equation. So, what do you want to do? You know the length L is given. So, what is the length L? Probably 1 plus y prime of x square dx, right? So, that's it. so this is a constraint problem, you see. So, immediately you can formulate. You want to find the among all, say so C2 curves, if you want it. Uh, you want to minimize this one with respect to this constraint. So, infimo? Ah, it's a maximum, sorry. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So, when I say for me, infimo means maximum of all. <laughs> sorry, okay. Minus y. Yeah, because you want to maximize the area, otherwise you put minus y and do that. Yeah, thanks. That's you want to maximize that area. And this is a, it's a, a typical very simple looking, simple looking minimization problem, not that easy. The other one is, uh, Heron's problem we already showed, the solution also how it is. The second one is the famous, this everybody knows. Uh, uh, the, uh, probably this back is to Crohn, right? This is the probably everyone knows. Avail, uh, this is one example given in the calculus of variation, maybe first example. What is that? Basically the problem, suppose you have a wire and you have a bead, you want to roll it down to a place down under gravity. Okay, so no other force is acting. Okay, and then what is the, you want to see that minimum time, it is not a straight line, right? You know, the, what is that solution? Ah, you know that is a cycloid. So, you can write this as a solution. Uh, so, you have to formulate the problem. That is what the classical mechanic people were interested at that time. You have to formulate it. So, uh, how do you formulate basically if you take uh, this is my positive y axis. This is just a formulation. You can do it anyway. You have a, a final uh, point here. What is the thing? It is because it is of gravity. Uh, the, uh, energy is preserved, right? <coughs> so, you have to write down that equation, basically. Let me see whether I have that one. Uh, so, the total energy may be how to minimize. I think, I do not know, there is a sign change, etc. But, the, the just a principle what I would say that, if V is the velocity, uh, this will be equal to mg y. y. This may be y dot, you see, v square, yeah, what I wrote in the beginning is correct. So, the velocity is uh, this one. Okay. 
So basically you can solve, you can normalize when you want to formulate a problem, it doesn't matter. You can take m equal to 1, g equal to half, uh, all that. You can formulate. Basic, the important thing is that we may look like this, the velocity. So in other words, you can write your velocity in terms of the position from the conservation of this energy. This is a conservation of energy, right? At this point, you have the zero energy, you see. And then as it moves, uh, it gets that. So you will have that. And with that, you will get a functional of the form. And then you can write down the time functional. The time functional will be from A to XF, uh, 1 plus, uh, you can reduce this to 1. Let me not do it. You can check any book or you can write yourself. Something, if I am right. Yeah, that's the one. You get that one. And then when you solve this one, you get cycloid. Cycloid, everyone knows. How do you get the zero cycloid, right? When a point on a circle it moves without slipping, the curve forms the cycloid. So basically, you will have a factor t minus sin t and cos t. So you can prove this. The most one of the most famous problems. How you solve all that is eventually when you know the oil and Lagrange equation, write down that, solve it. So I am just starting an example. So it is a whole thing is that it moves the thing only under gravity, nothing else. Another interesting example is catenary. So you have all these problems, You, if you have already studied, recall it, if you have not studied, uh, try to solve it, at least during this course time. Okay. Catenary is something, suppose you have a chain and you are hanging the chain. Uniform mass density. And you have a chain, you are hanging it. What is the shape? This I think was probably due to Galileo. What would be the shape? Anybody, any guess? At least Galileo's wrong guess. Hmm? No, those who already learned. So that we have a natural thing, anything says it will move according to your parabola, right? But it's not. Yes. yes. <laughs> Wrong. Parabola is not parabola. This is called as something like a catenary shape. It's a cos hyperbolic. Something like that. So what is the corresponding? What is what do you minimize? What is the, we are interested in what minimization problem you write it? What is the one you minimize? Not always catenary, right? Suppose you are hanging from here a big chain. The chain will come and stand here, right? So we are assuming the chain does not touch whatever way it has. You can solve this and get the solution this also in general mathematically. So what do you what is the functional you minimize here? What do, how do you take it the shape? What do you know about? When a chain is hanging, what is the physics behind it? Under what thing it will hang? Gravity, but what gravity will do? This is what I mentioned thing. That nature, everything is detected by the nature, nobody else. Nature has that minimize. So that's why all these problems are eventually minimization problems because nature wants to minimize everything. Yeah, that's it. That's what you do it. And when you are hanging, what's the energy it has? What energy it has? Exactly. So if you write your potential energy, you get that. So how to minimize the potential energy and up to a factor it will be something like this. I don't want to derive and spend time, so that's why I'm just writing down. You can see why the, of course there may be a factor, I would have normalized to something, but a minimization that doesn't matter. So this is reasonable to think, right? Because this is gives you the height, this gives you the uniform density, that mass. So this corresponds to mass and this corresponds to the height. So that the M, 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 G, H, G, G you can take it you like. It doesn't change the minimization problem. So you will be minimizing if you solve this problem. You will. So write down oil and Lagrange equation which I am going to say to and try to see these examples. The other most interesting example which we the PD people may be uh, rather interested is that the minimization of this function, 
This is called the famous Dirichlet problem. Dirichlet principle. Grade y dot y. You have a domain omega. You are looking for surfaces for that this is minimized. What is given to you? You are given by equal to y bar on the boundary. So that you want to minimize that. And I am not write, going to write, you know that. And more generally, you can also have a force. Of course, you don't have to write that one. This will lead, lead to your sub Laplacian problem. You see, corresponding Euler equation is the Laplacian. So, if you have a force acting on it, you have this. So, this is motivated by thing one is the geometry problem, like mean, looking for the surface. And it also corresponds to some electric field, electric potential. And it also comes from mechanics where you have an efficient applied force on an elastic body. And Y is the displacement. And this is something but your strain energy function. So you want to minimize your strain energy function. So all these problems, why the PDEB study these problems so intensely? Because uh, this problem comes across in the Y in omega, so on d omega. So this was a, the kind of activity in the late 1800s, maybe after that time of Riemann, Poincare and all that people. And you want to minimize here, you see, you want to minimize. So it was in the classical time. And the classical spaces are smooth spaces, that's what you are known it. But what that at that time they observed is that by sitting here, uh, if you want to, without this, if you want to look at the minimizing sequences, if you are trying to look minimizing sequences on the smooth class, you will have problems. What the observation is that you have to look for minimizing sequences of this form or something like that or something like that. So, you have to look for the minimizing sequences which converges to alpha. So you have to look for the such sequences, even if you take a smooth class, but then you have to put this type of semi norms there. And then you have to, so if you take in one dimension or something, uh, it's a, a, a b, and look for the derivative convergence, you know that, yeah, where does it lead to? Even in c of a b, just continuous functions will, uh, with respect to this norm. The basic example in functionality first you study is that with respect to L1 norm, L1 type norm, it's not complete. So you have to look for. And that completion what is led to the Lebesgue spaces. You see? Here, uh, if you look at this L1 norm or, uh, and then complete it, uh, that's where analysis differs. And then you want to look for this one, this is something more. And you want to look for the convergence with respect to that type of norms. And that's what your pseudo spaces basically. Uh, generalized functions. So it leads to the class of what are called generalized functions. Uh, and that was a real uh, thing. Intensi uh, uh, raised function. Lot of activities probably after 1870s and 80s. And finally, around 1920s were so low introduced. Uh, the Sobolev space. Before that, uh, the two of the most important problems of the century due to Hilbert, where you study uh, uh, existence and uniqueness of, uh, and the nonlinear studies and the kind of concepts like a priori estimate, all came into picture right at that time in the around 1900. The uh, all activity, and then interesting theories for your uh, Larry shoulder and many things. Uh, generalized in that direction of that. So this has a kind of impact in this minimization problem towards that. The one more example, and then I will slowly write down that thing. One more example may be the action principle which I said. You can more generalized coordinates, you can work, it may be applicable to many problems. 
but in general you will have something like that t of y y the prime minus uh, v of y of course when you take t is equal to m by 2 into mod y prime square minus v y that is nothing but your uh, difference in the kinetic energy and potential energy and the minimization it will maybe make uh, comments little later when you come again that. So, you will when you choose this is something like m by 2 mod y prime square and you minimize it your Euler Lagrange equation due to the Newton's law of motion of that. So, you can have more systems uh, with the general notions of that. Examples, let me just write down your uh, what is, is it something else making noise? Eh? I leave it to the mobile there because normally I do not take so I forget that is why I did not keep it. <laughs> So, how does the general problem of uh, uh, calculus of variation looks like? You can write a general framework. This is for general framework. So, you have j y is equal to integral of a to b l of x y y prime. So, you are interested in studying this. with some uh, additional assumptions may be y equal to y naught and y b equal to y naught. This is what I said. So, the calculus of variation you are trying to minimize certain functionals from a class of functionals in certain smooth class of functionals. Okay. That is what you are doing it like a priori a given class of functionals is given to you and you are trying to minimize that y in that class of functionals. That is a general thing. Optimal control problem you will see something more. Okay. And, uh, and the constraint problem I so can tell you. So, the, how do you do that? You are trying to do the same analysis what you done it in the Lagrange multipliers or the finite dimensional optimization theory. You want to vary that. That is the whole concept, right? How did you do that in the finite dimensional case? You are looked for a minimum problem. On that minimum, you are looked for this kind of vectors and you vary the point, right? That is what is done. But here, when you are trying to do that, you have to vary the trajectories. One way of varying the trajectory is similar way. You look for a trajectory heta in such a way that heta a equal to heta b equal to 0. So, I look for a smooth trajectory t, heta such that heta a equal to heta b equal to 0. And then when you have this y plus alpha heta, it will satisfy the same condition. When alpha is small, it is a family of your varying that one. One of the major difficulty in optimal control problem, this is not that easy and you cannot be in the class of smooth class when you deal with optimal control problem because the controls does not give you the freedom do this and that is where it has to wait to almost 200 years to uh, contragence principle. One of the major thing control you cannot expect uh, your dynamics depends on smooth controls and smooth uh, thing. You do not assume the kind of smoothness which is not expected okay. and that is one thing plus there is a the constraint given by there, the trajectories are not just a given class of trajectory. The trajectories are designed by the ODE constraint, which has far reaching applications in engineering. Because engineering, the dynamics is determined by trajectory. 
it's like a satellite trajectory or missile trajectory or anything. It is designed by a dynamical system in which you can act. So that kind of things will come soon. So you do that. So when you do that one, you just do a formal calculation. If the everything is smooth, things work. That's what, how do you? So you do this one. So if you call this uh, is equal to J alpha and do the procedure, similar procedure what you have done and you can justify everything when you have the smoothness and you eventually lead to what is called the Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay. <laughs> As I told you, the earlier many of the problems are made, the one of the major main scientists who are involved he was Johann and Bernoulli was the one given the uh, kind of uh, the examples which I have described. And of course, that uh, catenary may be due to Galileo. The other problems, uh, uh, Fermi and then Fermi, of course, uh, Snell's law and that uh, Heron's problem. The other problems are uh, uh, probably due to Johann, probably, but he was at least involved. Maybe that problem was there even before, but I think he's the major contributor of it to it. So you get Euler, like, if you do this one, and uh, calculate this one and apply your Taylor's principle or one. This is what you have to do it even when you see in your optimal control problem determined by navier stokes equations or other PDEs uh, described, you have to do this kind of principle. Okay, and then proceed it and then apply J prime or whatever it is. I don't want to get into that. You know the concepts like uh, pressure derivative and all that. All that you have to be little more uh, because we are doing it in every analysis in the infinite dimensional space, not in Rn. We are doing it in the class of functions the same calculus you are doing. So you have to have the right differentiability in that class of functions. Okay, And eventually you will end up getting uh, this equation L of y x y y prime minus d by dx of L y prime x y so that's what you are oil and like grand equation. I'm right, right? Yeah. Of course, there will be uh, more difficulties. You will see. You will not get immediately that one because it's an integral thing. What do you get is that a similar equation in the integral form you get it. What do you get this analysis that one? Similar equation with heta x equal to zero. This is what. But then heta is some sort of arbitrary function. Use the arbitrariness of heat ix, you derive this uh, point wise equation. So, first you arrive at an integral equation. From the integral equation, you get that one. So, this is a, so this is a second order equation basically. Right? You are differentiating one. So, it is a second order equation. So, the first remark which you have to understand that if y is an optimal solution, that how you derive, if you have to recall that once more what I said that, that one, you are starting with y is, a, is optimal, y is optimal in the sense that, so it is a necessary condition, you have to do that one, that is why you get this one, this is greater than or equal to 0. So you are starting with y is a solution to the minimization problem or y bar if you want, you can put it y bar, so what I am saying that j y bar, when I say that y bar is a solution. I am assuming this. This infimum has a solution y bar for which j y bar is equal to this one. That is what I say when I say an optimum minimization problem has a solution, then there exists a y bar such that j y bar is equal to this one. So, you are assuming follow this inequality and you derive this to y bar prime y bar y bar prime. If you want to be very precise, since this you are uh, most of you are familiar, I quickly wrote that one. So you get all Lagrange equations. So what it says that it's a necessary condition basically. If y bar is optimal, then y bar satisfies the Euler Lagrange equation. But Euler Lagrange equation it satisfies doesn't mean it will be an optimal solution. The converse is in general not true. It's a only a necessary condition. A solution to this one. So that's where the engineers were very happy again. Because they want that this can look for that one. Okay, so the certain cases you can see that it's eventually optimal. So one of the issue, the mathematical issue will be 
proving the existence of such a y bar. Suppose you, you prove y bar exists, then y bar will be a solution to this one. And you prove that this has a unique solution. And then you know that that's optimal solution. So you will be able to get it. That's one thing. For engineers and scientists, even if you don't prove it, they have a hope to get something here, which they will eventually use it for their thing. So it's a necessary condition. It's an optimal solution. It will satisfy this thing. And a solution to this is called an extremum. So an optimal solution is always extremal, but an, an extremal need not be an optimal solution to the thing. That's the final remark on that one. That you have to understand. So every optimal solution is an extremal, and extremal is not. You can look at a very uh, simple example for that. That uh, to see that this will have a solution. Uh, example. If you look at this case, uh, L is equal to y y prime square. Am I right? Yeah. That means you are trying to minimize j of y is equal to integral of 0 to 1 y y prime square with y at 0 is equal to y1 at 0 is equal to. So what is its Euler-Lagrange Euler equation? equation? What is your Ly? Ly is uh, y prime square minus Ly prime is 2yy. Or maybe add half here. That doesn't matter. Ly prime is equal to 2yy prime, right? What do, what do we get it? Uh, y prime d by dx. Yeah. Yes, uh, d by dx of 2y prime. Yeah, what I said is correct. With y at 0 is equal to y1. Now you see y identically 0 is a solution to that. This one. y identically 0 is an extreme. Hmm? Why is constant? Where is y is constant? Sir, v by dx 2 y yeah, dx. Y zero. Okay. But, uh, eh? yeah. Yes? Uh, the other Lagrange equation is y dash square equal to d by dx of 2 y y prime. L y prime. So y, but this cannot be zero. Cannot be a neither a minimum or maximum because y have you have all the choices. You see. Because y this that you prove it nicely. You can immediately see that right. This is positive, uh, but this need not be zero. Need not be a minimum. You can have negative values getting there for j as you like it. A very trivial example. So. When you do it, you have to be careful immediately. This is a solution to that is not guaranteed. All right. So, what do you want to do it? Yeah, I want to make a little connection about it. So, yeah, one more point I want to tell you. Though it's all initiated by Johannan and other people, probably the two people really it's made it like a more of a systematic study is due to Euler and Lagrange. So it came in that. So Euler really started it as a in a more systematic way, just like Bondragin and Bellman. Started in the 1950s for optimal control problems. Okay, so two cases, two important cases, and then you, I want to introduce some notions. Why these notions uh, uh, are taken in optimal control theory as well as calculus of variation? That's from classical mechanics. Suppose L is a uh, independent of y. L is equal to L x y prime, independent of y. 
How does the Ole Lagrange equation looks like? This will be the independent of y and this is zero. So you will have d by dx of L y prime is zero. That implies L y prime is constant. Let's keep that. The significance I will do it in the uh, special case. Then you will see the notion. Now take a case two. L is independent of x. Y y prime. And independent of x. This is all in optimal, on the optimal trajectory. I will leave you some calculation. Uh, use this to prove this. Okay, this is uh, a uh, trivial exercise, but still you go back to it and do it. D by dx of, you can prove that. L y prime, y prime into y prime minus L will be zero. Prove that. Okay, use that equation and just expand it, use that equation. Nothing else. So, if y prime is an extreme L, you have this one. If y is independent of x, you can do that. So what does that imply? L y prime, L y prime, y prime minus L is constant. Now take the special case our Newton's uh, classical mechanics. What is the classical mechanics you are L? In the classical mechanics, L y, y prime is equal to m by 2 mod y prime square minus v y. Of course, that is not independent of y, it is independent of x. But still, let us look at what is this L prime in that case. What is L y prime? L y prime is m y prime, right? But what is that? What is that term? Hmm? Momentum, right? That is what Newton's one of the major thing. Just in, even though there is a velocity, his one of the major things in Newton's law of motion is the introduction of that new terminology momentum. Because that is what it determines the kind of motion, not just velocity. That is what you see that, right? That is why in the childhood we are always confused when we hit a rock, which paints why the rock is not moving. You have to have an action equally here, right? The reason is because of the mass associated with it, with the velocity. So you don't see that one. So this is a momentum. Using this terminology, you always call L prime, Y prime is momentum. So in general, of course, this is not true here. So the momentum is not constant in the mechanical system. Okay, because uh, it's not independent of X. So this part is not true, but we call L Y prime the momentum. So that's the definition. For any Lagrangian, you call L Y prime momentum. Okay. But L is independent of X. So this is not true for that. So what is uh, uh, so another exercise you can do? Very quick computation. L Y prime Y prime minus L is nothing but M by 2 mod Y prime square in this case plus V Y. You can compute that. But what is that? This is the total energy, right? And what does this say? If I L is independent of X, which is true in the classic Newton's case, Newtonian motion, that uh, is a Hamilton momentum is, now the energy is preserved, that you know it. And hence this quantity, you call it uh, the Basically, this you call it the Hamiltonian. So that gives you the basically your Hamiltonian formalism. So you introduce a notion P is equal to L Y prime and introduce a new quantity, another quantity H that depends on X, Y, Y prime p is equal to p y prime, p is equal to l y prime y prime. 
the same quantity, but L is already introduced by Y prime. So, P Y prime minus L of L. That all depends on. And this we call it the Hamiltonian. So, you can now derive the, your Hamiltonian canonical equations and that you can again do it as an exercise, Hamilton's uh, canonical equations, canonical equations. You can prove that. You can prove these two using the Lagrange equation for an maximum d by dx of, uh, what is that? Correctly, then I don't want to change the side and I give it correctly. Yeah. Dy, dy by dx is equal to hp and dp by dx is equal to minus. So that is it, correct? Yeah, that's correct. This is called, so it's a first order system. You see? First order system. All right. All right. Fine. You followed that, right? So I want to tell you one more thing before giving you few remarks about. Uh, uh, this is where the difficult one of the difficulties later. Oh, first and more mathematics is required. Okay. What is the basically the connection between H and L? You have some connection, but I want to get something more uh, connection between L and L. This is done what is called, this is what is called a formal calculation, but everything is wise and if you can solve it, everything can be justified. But you have a view about that. This is done via what is called the Legendre transformation. Okay. What is that? Let's show the transformation. Suppose we have a function f from r n to r with psi as the variable. This is quite often the common variable. You define your f star with respect to a new variable p is the supremum of p dot of psi minus f of psi. Over p. Over psi. All right, you are taking that one. Yeah, it's correct. It's a linear uh, affine from f at that point. This has nice properties. You can read it. Uh, for example, I think uh, f star will be convex, and which I earlier I to forget to remove. When you have convexity, you have uh, very very nice things about your minimization problem because. Uh, Either, for example, if f is convex, a local minimum will be a global minimum, and you can prove the existence, uniqueness, and the first order condition will be a necessary, con sufficient condition. So, the very nice properties for your convex functions. And it's also involute if uh, you get, I think, f is convex, you get back this. So, there are very interesting properties as well. So formally, suppose you can solve this. This is a very formal calculation, which may not may or may not be true. Suppose you have a formal calculation, you can solve your uh, uh, psi equal to psi of p. It's all thing. So suppose you psi equal to uh, psi of p is a solution. Is the solution? Then what do you get? It your f star of p is equal to p psi of p minus f of psi of p. If you can solve that. Now you want to apply this for uh, my Lagrangian. Printing x and y are fixed and y prime is my psi. 
so you fix x and y and introduce your l of psi and introduce your psi, y prime you take it as a variable now so i can do that because you have the lagrangian l is given to be x y y prime i'm treating this a function of only y prime fixing x and y i'm treating my y and y prime all are independent variables right now okay so you can what is l of y l of psi is nothing but l of x y psi prime and then what is my l star of p l star of p is p psi p minus l of But that is my Hamiltonian, right? H of x, y, p. So, the definition. You look, am I right? Yeah, that is. Yeah, because, let me write, because this is nothing but p, y prime at p, y prime, evaluated of course at p, minus L of x, y, y prime at p. And that's how my Hamiltonian is introduced. P y prime minus L. So I solve it. So there is one serious issue is of course to solve of this equation. So uh, what you will get is that. And one more issue what we have to see that psi equal to psi of p solves this problem. Right? Psi of p equal to is a solution to this. So, this is a representation of your Hamiltonian where psi prime, y prime is so, uh, solved it. Psi equal to y prime. Y, y prime is solved. Then only you will have to have that. So, uh, when you represent this Hamiltonian, it's no longer y prime is an independent variable. Y prime depends on p. And that's the fundamental difference between this Hamiltonian written here, where you have wrote the Hamiltonian where y prime and p treat it as an independent variable. Here it is a dependent variable and there is one more equation you get it which you have not written because psi of p solves a minimization, maximization problem and hence its derivative should be zero with respect to that psi. So because this solves this problem, psi solves this minimum uh, problem, the derivative of that evaluated at that point will be zero. So that means you will get also this equation since psi p is a maximal solution, if you differentiate here, you get p minus f. f is correspondingly what is f here? l. And then you have to evaluate with respect to this psi variable, right? You understand? If the psi p is a solution of this problem, the derivative of this with respect to psi Evaluated at psi p should be zero. But here I am treating L, where my psi variable is y prime. So I get p, the derivative of L with respect to y prime, zero. So that is nothing but your equation which you have already derived, which you have it, that one. Okay. So this equation, there are more serious issues. It's difficult to tell that. y prime x y, y prime of p. Okay. And in that case, you have a representation is actually y prime of p. You can have that one. So you want to just make that remark, you can get back your actually, if you have the every solvability involved here, maximization, there is a solvability question here. All that, this is a serious issue, this solvability. That you may not have it easy. So all that is fine then you have your Hamiltonian can be viewed as the Legendre transformer of your L. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
one more issue i want to tell you today at least so that you can spend some time tomorrow before coming yeah about the, so these are all about the uh, constrained uh, unconstrained problem what you have you are got what about constrained problems so the constrained constrained calculus of variations problem there may be different types of uh, constraints but i want to tell you uh, quickly this is just a remark basically to set the stage for the optimal control tomorrow in the constraint thing so you can have one of the way to have a constraint you have you want to minimize j of y integral a to b l of x y y prime okay and then there will be an what is called one case two things one is an integral constraint integral constraint may be of this form y prime is equal to c so you have an integral constraint that is something like a just to one constraint you have a function but it's an integral constraint so you can have a basically one constraint so what this what you can do is that the exact procedure what you can do you can incorporate this constraint augment it with this kind of cost functional and you can have the existence of a lagrange multiplier you can get it so the similar analysis you can carry out for the constraint thing uh, with the integral constraint without much trouble the same form and the you can have the augmented function you have more work to do it it may not be trivial but you can basically augment this constraint with that integral constraint because it matches here and uh, you can do that one the second important point anything else in that point i, I don't want to uh, do that one yeah second point you have you may have a just a constraint like a point wise constraint point wise constraint then the problem is little more serious so the view that is where you have to view so this is no longer just one constraint so every point x you have a constraint you see the difference here there is one constraint only and you have one lagrange multiplier for that one on the other hand one way to view this one you have constraints and on a continuum of points x every x you have a constraint so naturally it should produce a lagrange multiplier for every x so the lagrange multiplier this is what in tomorrow you will see in the optimal control theory the concept of cost state function which you will see tomorrow so the basically the constraint will be lambda x or lambda will be a function of a b to r you see it's no longer just one kind that's an intuitive view but you have to do it but what i'm saying is that you can proceed the same type method do but what, uh, the what i want to convey to you is that the existence of a constraint as a function from ab to r or whichever domain is, is they doing it aren't you because every point you you view it as a constraint okay and then you can proceed so you will have a function and then you have to replace this by a augmented function which you give it appropriately you have to modify okay. now one last point before i conclude that is where the setting is for the do just want to yeah all right so look at this function maybe x y x y prime of x 
this will be a set of relations okay you have to see that it may be a set of k relations it's not just one it may be a set of uh, k it just like you have seen that in the play plane the case you have actually k equations coming there okay and and you suppose you want to solve y prime in terms of think that it is a function of y and y prime you want to solve y prime in terms of x and y when you want to solve y prime in, in terms of x and y y prime may have n dimension because it's y is a uh, this and then this constraint so if just like an equation you will have n equations or two equation then you may have only one constraint okay you may not have all the constraint which allows you to have it you have a uh, under determined system when you have an under determined system something like that you want to solve you have a n variable and you have k equations when you have k equations you have an n minus k free variable that's how do you how you solve it suppose you want to solve it x plus y equal to 1 how do you solve it the equation x plus y equal to 1 you can take x to be anything and then you get your y is equal to 1 minus u that allows you to have your free variables into the system okay so the constraint will produce a free variables in the system okay and that so you can view y prime eventually solve you will have a y prime which will be a function of x y and then there will be a free variable because it's an under determined system do you get that point looking a little difficult for example suppose you have a your constraint my is something like say y1 prime minus y2 prime equal to 0 suppose this is my constraint i want to solve i want to minimize the under this constraint that's all you so you have in a 2 by 2 in n equal to 2 i want to minimize that so you have only constraint so what do you do is that you have y1 prime is equal to y2 this will give you and y2 is free because there are two variables so you can put y2 equal to c y2 equal to u so basically you will have one control one free variable acting in the form of control so you can visualize this constraint in this dynamical form with enough number of controls there and if it is an unconstrained system it is just y prime equal to u that's it if you take y prime equal to u and proceed it you will have your unconstrained problem with a control variable so the optimal control is something like more general as the real calculus of variation problem with constraint the point wise constraint can be formed eventually as a problem with the free variables and the free variables we can act on it and and that is given by a certain dynamical system that's a applicability come because of the pdes are present there because the most of the physical engineering problems are eventually modeled by a differential equation constraint that's why the optimal control theory came into so what we will be going to see is that you will have now you don't have so the optimal control problem which we will describe tomorrow here is a function isn't yeah you are saying it is a free variable yeah it's a function of course it's a function of t or x whatever it is like this it's not just a yeah so this relation gives you only this one so you have a freedom to choose your y2 to define your charge trajectories you see right that's it so that gives you the applicability okay so so the what we will be going to see tomorrow is we we'll want to minimize jy and uh, where your dynamics the class of trajectories is not a, a priori given kind of trajectory trajectories are designed by a dynamical system where certain free variables are there and this free variables allows you to design your trajectory that's a crucial point you have to see you have can take the free variables possibly in such a way that you can design your trajectory you can put your satellite the 
place you want it. If it, it goes some uh, in the error way, you can divert it by applying something on the free variable. Okay, so we'll be doing in constraint of the dynamic constraint. So it's a dynamic constraint now. So optimal control theory can be viewed as a dynamic optimization, a dynamic calculus of variation. And that's the view we want to see, pursue here. View that optimal control theory is a dynamic optimization. Okay. Where the trajectories are designed in this talk which I'm giving, given by the ODE constraints. As I repeatedly telling, ODE constraints gives the applicability. That's why it came, became the aerospace applications were became so important because we want to design the trajectory. So trajectories are now something arbit at arbitrary. So basically, you want to minimize. So given a control variable function, you have it, uh, given a choice of u, you have a choice of y, starting from maybe yt0 to yt1. And we will decide according to whether this is free, this is uh, fixed, and all that. That leads to different types of control problems. And whether there is a control which is leading to this one, to this one, is the question of controllability. That you may or may not see something to see. Okay. But assuming that there are controls which you are doing in a class of functions, so you may be in some certain class of functions like L2, whatever it is, a class of function, you will have a corresponding trajectories. And corresponding to that, so J will basically did not depend on Y. It will depend on the control. Because the moment you choose a control, you have a trajectory. And corresponding to that trajectory, you will have a function. Something like uh, L of x, y, u now. Okay. So see, the, you, you immediately you see that the minimization y prime is replaced by u. You have your calculus of variation problem back. But in general, need not be. In general, u need not be coming from y prime, just like that. So y prime specializes u. You have your calculus of variation problem. Okay. So this doesn't give you back that y prime equal to u. Okay. So the optimal control problem deals with this. So, and, uh, like this, some that is coming from there, but now no. Okay, <laughs> that constraint optimization gives you the relation, but in general, no, you don't have it. You have uh, dynamics. This dynamics depending on the problem, whichever which problem you are determining. This is a dynamical system. It gives you the trajectory. So, an optimal control problem consists of a dynamical system where this trajectories, the dynamics of the trajectory can be designed using a function called control function. So the notions like what you will see that uh, a dynamics, a dynamics means I can just call it by f because the moment f is there, this equation is it. A control. Okay. The exam given by can also be eventually given by partial differential equations, which uh, let's see what we will do. And there will be a control. The, this is called a cost functional. Okay. There will be different types of cost functionals. Different types of cost functionals will lead to different types of Pontryagin and Maximum Principle. There is a Bolsa form, there is a Mayer form, there is a Lagrange form. We will explain that in different forms tomorrow. And corresponding to that, there will be other things like there will be a terminal cost. Because when you play a match and when you win, you get more money, right? It's very simple. For every play, you get some money. Even if you lose, you have that money. But when you win, you get more bonus. So that's a terminal cost. So you will have a so a more general form will be of this form, J u is equal to integral of L of x y u. There will be a terminal cost at x one t one. So we will change the notation tomorrow to little bit because I want to have my dynamic view. To have the dynamic view, I need my t variable. Tomorrow, I'll change the things to the normal optimal control theory people will use. So for classical theory, used in that way. 
So, there we will have T as the time parameter and X is the trajectory which we have used it. So, we will deal with that and we will basically mainly write the bond reagent principle tomorrow. And then we will go to we go as long as the time permits. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect.